is the Chris Abraham Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Chris Abraham Show. This is Season 4, Episode 25. Bente Cinco. Bente Cinco. Uh, Vingt Quatre. And I think it's... Um, uh, fünf und zwanzig? Fünf und zwanzig? Hey Google, what is 25 in German? In German, that's 25. Ah, good. Nothing. 25. I made the pause because it takes a while for Google to stop listening for me. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the importance of having an organized home. Now... This is not me mansplaining what an organized home is. This is someone who, uh, to put it lightly, my the owner of the cleaning service that cleans my apartment uh, honored me by telling me that the reason why I live so squalidly is because I am creative. And that as a result of being a creative, I am completely internal and the external world is a swirling chaos of hellfire and um, decrepitude. Now, I can pretend that I don't suffer from crazy until I allow my apartment to get to the point where it was yesterday, previous to 2 p.m. Uh, when I arrived home yesterday at about uh, 5.30, my apartment looked like it was... Uh, designed by um, beautiful organizational goddesses and uh, and and Mary Konda or whatever her name is, but the place was awful. It was disgusting. There were backed up plates and 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 utensils. I I'm religious about making sure that my cast iron and my stainless steel. And my carbon steel pans are not washed by the cleaning service, so I had done those. My bathroom looked like a looked like honestly, it looked like uh, whatever baby uh, Ian and Fiona uh, had. In fact, the ap entire apartment, which is basically an efficiency on the eighth floor of Dominion Towers, my apartment looked like the baby of Fiona, Hurricane Fiona, and Hurricane Ian. And one might say that I'm being hyperbolic or that I'm being bombastic or that I'm being... Uh, but, but every week I would be so busy during the week in my head that and it was just cluttered. And I kept on saying to myself, I'm going to push it another week uh, because the cleaning people do not do well when they have to deal with a cluttered apartment. So I kept on putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And by the time they came in, I guarantee you when I see the bill, it's going to take my, take my breath away. Because I guarantee you that it's going to be appalling. And I will have paid and deserved, they deserved every dollar that they received. But, um, of course, my business partner, Dan, uh, thinks it's completely crazy because he says to me, and, and I must, let me tell you, if, if you can relate to this, um, I, hope you, I hope someone can relate to this because what I'm doing by creating this episode is making sure that nobody ever dates uh, 
own fiances or marries me ever. Um, but I was talking to someone downstairs, and it's different about living alone than it is about living with someone. Although if you talk to my last girlfriend, she might not say the same thing. But uh, I just, most of the time I don't see it. I don't see it accumulate. I don't see uh, the hellfire and brimstone. I don't see the uh, hurricanes start to happen. Um, but I feel so much better. I feel like such a weight has been taken off my shoulders. And, oh, I was just going to say that my business partner, whenever we talk on the phone, uh, and I'm like, I need to work out more. He's like, then lift heavy things until you're breathing heavier, your heart's beating, and you're sweating, and then stop. And then the next day, lift heavy things until your heart is beating, until you're sweating, uh, until you feel exhausted, and then stop. And then I talked about this, and he's like, every time you use a plate, eat your food, and then wash it and put it away. Every time you use a pan, wash it. If you need to re-oil it, dry it, or dry it, re-oil it, and put it away. Every time you use a mug, every time you use a plate, every time you use a bowl, etc., etc., etc. I'm thinking about actually getting rid of all my plates, all my bowls, except for one very nice bowl, one very nice plate, and live the life of a Buddhist monk. But he says it as if it's super easy and super obvious. And uh, right now, the day after the apartment has been turned into um, what I assume heaven looks like as opposed to my yesterday hell, I have such good intentions. I do, like this morning, I made, I'm on carnivore diet, so I constantly have to cook meat. So I made uh, basically pork, ground pork sausage, basically raw, um, sweet, Italian sweet ground pork sausage mixed with 73% Kobe, um, ground beef, 73% lean, uh, Kobe ground beef, mixed it up into a big ball, added, um, added, uh, French flake sugar, uh, salt, um, cayenne pepper, paprika, pepper, and then squash it into a big flat, like Salisbury steak, and then fried that up on, um, is a, I guess it's a, it, it, it's a lodge pan, but it doesn't have walls. So one might say it's a crepe pan or a pancake pan or an egg pan, um, but it does great work. Cook that up, ate it, and wash the dishes, wash the pan, dried it, oiled it, left it on the range. So I use it, I use only that tomorrow. Uh, presumably that only that low walled pan, I need that for the meat. I need that for the steak. One might say that if I cook the ribeyes that I bought in something flat like that without walls, I wouldn't be able to, um, uh, drizzle it or baste it with a pan sauce, so- with a pan sauce or, or butter. So I might upgrade to a higher walled carbon or or um or cast iron uh pan but by minimizing the usage of various things and cleaning them and putting them away seems logical to me and then two months pass three months pass and literally uh the hell spawn of fiona and ian 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 Man, they pronounced Ian so many different ways. How do you pronounce Ian? I pronounce it Ian. I've heard it pronounced Ion. I've heard it pre- pronounced Ion. I do not know. All I know is that my ca- my high school girlfriend, Georgina King Marr, was uh, the older sister to a an actress named Fiona King Marr. And Fiona King Marr was the lesbian dog breeder slash um, 
uh, dog uh, rescuer that was in the Ted Lasso series second season. So if you want to see what Fiona Marr looks like, go to Google, type Fiona Marr, Ted Lasso, and I guarantee you that you will see the video that I uploaded. It's not the best video. I took a video of it from my screen on my television, so it's garbage. Um, but you'll be able to see who she is. So I'm not, I think of her when I think of uh, Hurricane Fiona, but when I say the hell spawn of Hurricane Fiona and Hurricane Ian, I'm in fact talking about uh, to the point where I play uh, apartment Russian roulette because periodically, since this is a rental, the people from downstairs, the uh, management team, periodically they have to come in here and they have to check something, they have to look for leaks, they have, there is a leak, or, or they have to change the filter on the, um, uh, the HVAC system, the, the heater and air conditioner, etc., 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 and when it gets, by the way, what is the name of the love child between Fiona and Ian? Iona. Iona. So, Iona is the love child. It's a demon woman spawn of this apartment. And actually, you know what the demon spawn of Ian and Fiona are? His name's Chris Abraham. And I, when it gets bad and the place is complete decrepitude, I play Russian roulette with the pest control guy or the heater or the AC filter guy, or I play Russian roulette with something's going to leak, something's going to break, uh, something's going to drip into another apartment, or something's going to draw the attention of the management team. And for the last two weeks, since I knew it was getting really bad, and I knew that at some point I would need to take an entire day off to declutter and de-louse it before they came. I was, they always leave a, uh, a, a message on the door letting you know that they'll be coming the next day. And I literally played uh, Russian roulette with people coming in here and writing me up for a decrepitude uh, Fiona in um, Hell Baby apartment in my head, in my head. 80% of this, 90% of this is in my head. Um, uh, most of my anxiety, most of my crazy, most of my whatever undiagnosed mental illness I have is completely in my head. Um, some of it's external. The place really was uh, freaking insane. It was bad. I can't even take pictures because the shame and humiliation ran so deep that I filtered that out actively from my experience of the world, and I edited that out from any experience uh, that resulted in video or, or camera film evidence. So, if someone who was really organized came in here, they would still say it's a mess, but it the floors are cleaned and vacuumed, the counters are spick and span. Thank you to Angel or Angel, Thank you for Angel of Apartment Keepers. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, Angel, how much I love you. Please don't take my apartment keepers away. Anyway, that's the episode. Um, please do not allow it to get as bad as it could. Even if you hire a cleaning person to come and it's cluttered as hell, they will do They will do a better job of maintaining the uh, cleanliness, the, um, I guess, what is the term? They will make sure that the baseline is maintained, the beach is held, the hill is held, the mountain is held, uh, the fort is held, the city is held, uh, and while it won't, Unless you hire someone to help you organize or purge or do a Mary Conda yourself, you're not going to purge uh, the bigger 
if you will, the that analogy of big rocks and small rocks. Cleaning people always clean up your small rocks. They might not be able to touch your big rocks. Uh, but honestly, the place was so decrepitude, decrepit, that I didn't even want to go through my big rocks and purge things and get rid of things and organize things because there was just... It was just all chaos in my head. And when I even looked at it, uh, I was afraid I was going to pop into a fibrillation, into AFib, into arrhythmia. I felt like I was going to get hives. I felt uh, my heart rate increase. It was just torturous to me. So I thought because sometimes I'm accused of curating my life to make me seem more interesting or less flawed. Oh, as one aside, yes, when I lived with my girlfriend, we had a fly apartment down in Crystal City. And even though she, if you talked to her, she would still say I was a mess. What I did every day before I left the apartment in the morning, she would leave early. I would leave at around 8 o'clock. I would shower at, like, I would shower right after her. But then I would fart around for a little while listening to NPR and while doing that, I would try to wipe down every... There was a giant marble island in the middle of the open open space, open format, open whatever kitchen. And I would make a point of trying to clean everything, dry everything, put everything away, wipe everything down in the kitchen, wipe everything down in the bathroom... Um, and make sure that anything that was on the floor was taken care of so that when Betsy came back to the apartment in the evening, she would be blessed or rewarded or just generally, um, generally experience uh, a not chaotic environment where she would need to immediately go from working at Bloomberg to needing to clean up after me. Now, I do not have an eye for what is clean or whatnot. I honestly believe that I see a reality very different from her. What I see is before I leave, I leave a completely clean and spotless place. When she comes home, she sees that Chris is a pig and it's appalling to live with him. So, even if I spend an hour every day cleaning what I think is someone else's space to the point where I can't even see anything out of place, my filter is so strong to uh, not show me shambles that even when I do my very best to make everything perfect, it still is subpar to her baseline of acceptability. So that is why I don't think anybody will want to marry, have my babies, uh, live with me, etc. in the future because I've just become more feral. I was talking to the owner of my favorite cafe, Ididos, and his name is Sophonia, Sophonius. And um, I was joking about how I've become... Um, a hyena, but I think hyenas are pack animals, and I'm a solitary animal, so I think I've become um, a honey badger, I guess, or maybe a star-nosed mole, or maybe a uh, something like that, a Komodo dragon, whatever. I live in a burrow. Um, it's dark and dank and awful, and, um, and I live, and, and, uh, you know, essentially I'm feral. So, you know someone who is completely feral, and I think I overcompensate with my feral nature with, um, trying to be, trying to sound like I'm always choosing le mot juste, the right word, or being... Uh, at the edge of highly pretentious when I can, but you'll maybe this will humanize me, maybe this will dehumanize me, maybe this will put me into the world of um, those dogs that hang around hospitals and developing nations. But I am feral. My name's Chris Abraham.
I have a bad podcast. I'm an entitled white cisgender man in his 50s. And I am feral. I love you. And I'll talk to you soon. I'm not going to include my contact info at the end of this episode because I don't want to be associated with the kind of behavior and the crazy that I have in my head and the way it manifests in the world around me. I do want to thank Angel of Apartment Keepers for keeping me in sanity, no matter what he charges based on the length of time required to turn this from chaos to cosmos. And I must thank him for a beautiful compliment in the, in the form of, well, you know, all the artists that we have in our clientele, just, it's like a, a tornado uh, exists around them and their apartments just turn to heck. And there is a, an artist, he said, that my ladies go to, and he has them go to his apartment every week. Uh, And I think that maybe I need to have the ladies come to my apartment every week. I will look at my finances because I just cannot allow this to happen again. And I feel like if I make the appointment every week uh, baseline, then I will be... um, I will be under the crop, if you will, under the whip, under the crop of compliance for my my world so no contact after this this is the end of the episode i love you merci beaucoup à demain à bientôt à tout à l'heure hasta la vista baby um auf wiedersehen and cheesy Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.